Some might say that the personality of our founding father, Harvey Cushing, set the public image of what a neurosurgeon should be. A man who's smart, intense, precise, and Hollywood's tried to capture that on the silver screen when they portray brain surgeons as the wealthiest, best looking, smartest person at the cocktail party. It may be silver screen, but I suspect there's an element of truth to that. Here are the early movies where a disembodied brain is the star. Donovan's Brain, a 1953 movie directed by Felix E. Feist, starred Nancy Davis before she became Nancy Reagan. Her mother married neurosurgeon Dr. Loyal Davis. Something, kid. A brain without a body. Alive. It's wonderful. It's great work, Frank. Congratulations. It's terrific, but I'm glad it's over. There must be something wrong. There are indications of alpha waves. Not too unusual. In violent death like the plane crash, organs of the body die at different times. It is brain still alive. Imagine being alive without a body. The brain that wouldn't die is a 1962 horror film directed by Joseph Green. It's a wonderful, trashy, mad science flick about a doctor who keeps his wife's severed head alive in a tray while searching for a replacement body in the local strip clubs. Interesting concept, but probably hard to get through an IRB. Should have let me die. Hate him for what he's done to me. The 1960s television series Ben Casey, filmed here in Operating Room One at LA County Hospital, reminds us that a television hero doesn't necessarily have to be likable. Knife. I'm into the artery as far as I can go. You get me back, Flo? A little. We'll have to try a graft. Whatever you want to do, let's not waste time. We're getting a real problem here. Doctors, the patient's awake, you know. The external artery is too small. You'll never be able to put in a graft. We'll have to try. You heard what the cardiologist said. Time's running out. Doctor, this operation was your idea, not mine. Now that it's started, let's give him a run for his money. All right then, Casey. Give him a run for his money. So this next film, Candy, sounds like a perfectly good name for a 1960s vintage sex film. But this is actually uh, James Coburn playing to a live audience the role of superstar neurosurgeon A.B. Crankite. And in this role, he plays a classic 1960s vintage neurosurgeon. cerviovascular control system fully three inches inside his head. With one tiny movement, I can wipe out 20 years of memories as easily as you can erase a blackboard. But that's not going to happen. Because I know just where it's at. <laughs> Everyone knows. Finds the correct spot in the fusiform gyrus. You recognize no one. In the movie Spectre, the latest 2015 James Bond film sees Blofeld torturing Bond with a robotic drill. Blofeld wants to take out the lateral fusiform gyrus, but instead aims the drill near the vertebral artery. Obviously, he did not train with Steve Giannata. Dr. Derek Christopher Shepard, also known as McDreamy, has been popularized by the ABC medical drama, Grey's Anatomy. Airing since 2005, this television drama nicely demonstrates the transition from the old neurosurgeons who were fiery and tempestuous 
to the modern neurosurgeon who is more even-tempered and very good-looking. Izzy is not your mother. She doesn't have an untreatable brain condition. She has a tumor, and it can be treated. Don't make this personal, Meredith. It's the horror films that really get me. In Hannibal, Anthony Hopkins feeds Krendler, played by Ray Liotta, his final meal. Dr. Lecter. You see, the brain itself feels no pain, Clarice, if that concerns you. For example, Paul won't miss this little piece here, which is the uh, part of the prefrontal lobe, which they say is the seat of good now. Here's the sac that contains the brain. I would really like some more. <laughs> that smells great. If you are going to see one Hollywood neurosurgery movie in your life, make it Buckaroo Banzai. Peter Weller plays Dr. Buckaroo Bond. Image guidance stat. We don't have time for that. You can't do it freehand. I can and I will. This isn't a time for showing off, strange. How about 10 minutes ago when you called the wrong time of death? Cranial nerves intact. Benedict Cumberbatch is cast as a neurosurgeon, Dr. Strange. He's talented, self-assured, and never wrong. So as you can see, the movies have yet to perfectly capture or embody the modern neurosurgeon. And with only 3,800 neurosurgeons in our specialty and less than 60,000 worldwide, we're a very small group. The SEAL Team 6 of the healthcare profession. And Harvey Cushing would be proud of his legacy. And yet we can still watch ourselves as caricatures on the silver screen. Hey you guys, don't eat all the popcorn. A superstar neurosurgeon, A.B. Crankite. Think of this glove on, damn it. <laughs> Let's try again.